I'm Professor Graham Yorston, and in this episode of 5-Minute Mental Health Disorders, I'll be talking about the fascinating Cotard's Syndrome, sometimes known as the Walking Corpse Syndrome. People with Cotard's Syndrome believe that parts of their body or internal organs don't work, or don't exist, or even that they are dead. No amount of persuasion will convince them otherwise, and they just can't see the contradiction in believing that they're dead and yet still able to breathe and walk around. In 1880, French psychiatrist Jules Cotard reported the case of a 43-year-old woman who believed that she had no brains, nerves, chest or entrails and was just skin and bone, that neither God nor the devil existed and that she didn't need food. She asked to be burnt alive and made various attempts to end her life, and she eventually died of starvation. Kutta originally described her symptoms as hypochondriacal delusions in anxious melancholia or severe depression. But two years later, he introduced the term délire de négation. This is often translated as delusions of nihilism, but the French term délire means much more than just delusion or delirium. Being closer to the English word syndrome, and there is no doubt that Cotard was describing a complex of symptoms encompassing anxiety, depression and other delusions, rather than just nihilistic delusions. Cotard's name was attached to his syndrome after his death in 1893, in a paper by Émile Régy. But there followed a protracted debate about whether it was a separate disease, distinct from depression and schizophrenia, or just a collection of symptoms that occurred in a range of mental disorders. Nowadays, the term Cotard delusion is used when a patient describes nihilistic delusions, but it does not appear as a diagnosis in its own right in any of the current international classification systems. Patients generally fall into one of two clusters of symptoms, those with other features of depression and those without. A case from Brazil involved a 31-year-old man who believed that his organs had been destroyed, that he was hollow inside and that his entire body was rotten and stank. He said his body was deformed, his face was full of holes, and he wanted to die to pay for wrongs committed in his youth, and he felt he was not worthy of any happiness and would never see the sun again. He was treated and responded well to antidepressant medication. Another man who believed he had no brain attempted suicide because he believed life wasn't worth living, as he had no brain. A woman in New York told her family she was dead and that her flesh was putrefying, and she asked to be taken to the morgue. Wisely, her family took her to a hospital instead. I recently had a patient who insisted that his stomach was gone, and his muscles had become useless, as he couldn't absorb any food. He said he had not gone to the toilet for months, that his genitals were shrinking, and that he was fading away to nothing. He was actually eating very well, and put on weight in hospital, but when asked about the increasing size of his paunch, he said it was nothing, just skin and bones. He blamed his symptoms on a nurse who had given him an injection several years before and had no signs of depression. It mostly affects adults, but there is an unusual case of a 14-year-old boy with epilepsy who experienced repeated episodes of Cotard syndrome after seizures. He would say that everyone and everything around him was dead and he described himself as a corpse. He would be convinced the world was going to be destroyed and throughout the episodes, lasting several weeks, he had no interest in social or pleasurable activities. It is fortunately very rare with only 200 cases being reported worldwide in the century after Cotard's first description. However, less severe nihilistic delusions are more common in depression and dementia. Cotard's syndrome occurs in schizophrenia, severe psychotic depression, and dementia. It has also been reported in people with brain tumours, traumatic brain injury, subdural haemorrhage, migraines, epilepsy, and as an adverse reaction to acyclovir. Some research has suggested an association with lesions in the parietal lobe, and recently a specific gene mutation has been linked to psychotic symptoms in frontotemporal dementia, including Cotard's delusions. As with all patients with psychotic symptoms, the diagnosis is made by asking the patient to talk about their beliefs and seeing how firmly held they are. 
understanding the evolution of symptoms over time and how they are affecting the person is important. Comprehensive blood tests and a brain scan can be helpful in identifying specific causes. It has been suggested that Per Olin, stage name Dead, lead vocalist for the black metal band Mayhem, had Cotar syndrome. However, people with Cotar syndrome are not obsessed with death. They do not collect dead animals, wear corpse paint or burn down churches. They are not zombies or pretend zombies. It is not an affectation, but an illness. Treatment is directed at the primary disorder. If it is schizophrenia, then antipsychotic medication is used. If severe depression, then antidepressants with antipsychotics and sometimes mood stabilizers or ECT are used. Acetylcholine esterase inhibitors can help in some cases of dementia, but in frontotemporal dementia they are generally ineffective. The prognosis depends on the underlying disorder. Most people improve once medication has been started. Some cases are resistant to standard treatments, however, and may require combination or high-dose treatment. Sadly, some cases do not respond, and people continue to experience severe and disabling symptoms. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and click the notification bell to be kept up to date with all the latest releases. See you next time.